we shall commence this module by discussing about time value of money. Time value of money TVM states that the money received one year later or any time in future is worth less than the money received today. To state it otherwise, the money received today is worth more than the money received one month or one year later. The time value of money's concept is very relevant in the financial decision making. If the financial manager does not account for the time value of money while evaluating different projects, he or she might end up selecting a project generates lower amount of actual returns as compared to the returns provided by the other projects. For instance, a financial manager might have two options to select from a project which generates low but early returns and a project which generates a little higher but late returns. If she does not consider the time value of money, she would straight away select the latter project. But considering the time value of money, the former project might be worthwhile to be selected. This will depend on the difference in the amount of cash flows generated and the relative time gap between the inflows and outflows from the two projects. After starting this module, you shall be able to know time value of money, know about the various factors which affect time value of money, evaluate the methods of calculating present and future values. Let us discuss about the relevance of time value of money. Suppose you have won a cash prize. You have two payment options. A. Receives $10,000 now or B. Receive $10,000 in three years. Which option would you choose? If you are like most people, you will choose to receive the $10,000 now. After all, three years is a long time to wait. Why would any rational person defer payment into the future when he or she could have the same amount of money now? For most of us, taking the money in the present is just plain instinctive. So at the most basic level, the time value of money demonstrates that all things being equal, it is better to have money now rather than later. But why is this? A $100 bill has the same value as a $100 bill one year from now, doesn't it? Actually, although the bill is the same, you can do much more with the money if you have it now because over time, you can earn more interest on your money. Back to our example, by receiving $10,000 today, you are composed to rise the future value of your money by investing and gaining interest over a period of time. For option B, you don't have time on your side and the payment received in three years would be your future value. If you are choosing option A, your future value will be $10,000 plus any interest acquired over the three years. The future value of option B, on the other hand, would only be $10,000. Let us understand the factors affecting TVM. First, number of time period involved months, years. Second, annual interest rate or discount rate depending on the calculation. Third, present value. What do you have right now in your pocket? Fourth, payments, if any exist. If not, payment equal zero. Fifth, future value. The dollar amount you will receive in the future, a standard mortgage will have a zero future value because it is paid off at the end of the term. Many people use financial calculators to quickly solve these TVM equations by knowing how to use one, one could easily calculate a present sum of money into a future one or vice versa. The same goes for determining the payment on a mortgage or how much interest is being charged on a short term loan. Components in hand, the financial calculator can easily determine the missing factor. To calculate this by hand, the formulas for future value FV and present value PV are explained in other sections. Moving on to discuss about the future value. We have just discussed the concept of compounding. The compounding techniques help us to find out the future value of today's money. We have already seen that to make the money of time period T1 comparable with the money of time period T0, we need 
to find out the value of money of time period t0 at time period t1 that is its future value. The future value concept can be applied to two situations. Future value of a lump sum, future value of an annuity, future value of a lump sum. The future value of a lump sum can be found out by using the already mentioned formula which is Fv is equal to Pv 1 plus R raised to the power n where Fv is equal to future value, Pv is equal to present value, R is equal to percentage rate of return and n is equal to time gap for which future value has to be calculated. The future value of a sum depends on the combination of three factors that is present value, rate of return and number of years. Suppose you joined a summer training camp organized by your college at the beginning of your first year and received a stipend of rupees 10,000 after the completion of your training period. You invest this sum of rupees 10,000 into a bank which gives you an interest rate of 10% every year. Now after 3 years when you have completed your graduation you go to your bank to withdraw your money. The amount of money that you will get can be found out as follows. Fv is equal to Pv 1 plus R raised to the power n. Fv is equal to 10,000 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power 3 which will give you the answer as 13,310. The value of 1 plus R raised to the power n can be stated as the compound value factor CVF. The value of CVF in the above case is 1.331. Similarly, the value of CVF can be found for other combinations of present value, rate of return and time period. This can be denoted as CVF in bracket R percentage comma n. If we need to find out the value of CVF in the example, we should look for the value which comes in the column of 10% rate of return interest and in the row of 3 years time period. This value is 1.331. Thus, we get the same value which we have obtained from our computations. It can be observed that there is a positive relationship between the rate of interest and the future value. Higher the rate, higher will be the future value of a particular sum provided the present value and the time period remain constant. Next is future value of an annuity. In the above case, one lump sum amount was invested at the beginning for some specified number of years at some specified rate of interest. But sometimes in real life, the financial manager might face a situation in which she has to invest a particular amount of money in an investment option every year for a specified number of years at a specified rate of interest. This is called annuity. In other words, the annuity is a fixed payment or receipt of cash every year for a specified number of years. For instance, to modify our example, if you were to participate in the training session of your college at the end of your first, second and third years and you were to get the same rupees 10,000 every time you complete your session. Now you invest this amount into your bank at the same rate of interest that is 10%. Further you invest rupees 10,000 at the end of first second and third year into your bank, this is the case of an annuity. In this case, the amount invested in the first year will earn an interest for two years. That invested in the second year will earn interest for one year and that invested at the end of third year will not earn any interest. This can be enumerated as follows. Fv is equal to 10,001 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power 2 plus 10,001 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power 1 plus 10,000. After doing the calculations, we get the answer as rupees 33,100. Alternatively, the future value of an annuity can be calculated by the following mathematical formula. Future value of an annuity is equal to present value 1 plus r raised to the power 2 plus pv 1 plus r raised to the power 1 plus pv. Future value of annuity is equal to present value in bracket 1 plus r raised to the power n 
minus 1 upon r. The term within the brackets is referred to as the compound value factor for an annuity CVFA. The future value in our example could be calculated using the above mentioned formula. FE is equal to PV in bracket 1 plus R raised to the power N minus 1 upon R. Putting the values 10,000 in bracket 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power 3 minus 1 upon 0 0.10 after doing the calculation, we get the answer 33,100. The value 3.31 in this case is the compound value factor for our annuity. Next, we will discuss the present value. In the last section, we had converted today's money in the money's worth of one year down the line. In the current section, we will learn how to convert the future money into the worth of today's money. As there is a future value associated with the sum invested now, there is a present value associated with the sum to be received in future. Thus, present value is the value of money equivalent to a particular amount to be received in future. To calculate the present value of a sum, we need to discount the future money at an appropriate rate of discount. This is done through the discounting technique. Present value is equal to future value upon 1 plus r raised to the power n. Next is present value of a single cash flow. The present value of a sum will be less than its future value since one foregoes opportunity to earn some return by investing the sum received today. If you were to receive some cash from someone whom you had earlier lent and the person asked you to allow him a credit period of one year, then you certainly will require a larger amount in the next year than what you had lent since you have foregone the opportunity to earn a return on the amount had you received it today and invested somewhere. Thus the money to be received in future has a value lower than the value of today's money. In other words, the present value of a sum is always lower than its future value. The larger the time gap to receive the money, the lesser will be its present value. As we had compounded the value of today's money to calculate its future value, we would now discount the value of future money to calculate its present value. Say for example, we are to receive rupees 1120 after one year and the rate of interest that we could have earned had we invested this sum today, the expected rate of return is 12%. Then the present value of this sum can be calculated as follows. Present value is equal to future value upon 1 plus r raised to the power n. Putting the values PV is equal to 1120 divided by 1 plus 0 0.12 raised to the power 1. After doing the calculation, we get the present value of rupees 1000. Thus, the present value of rupees 1120 to be received next year is rupees 1000. It means that rupees 1120 to be received next year is equivalent to rupees 1000 to be received today, assuming the required rate of return is 12%. In other words, if you would have received rupees 1000 today, you would have invested the sum to earn a 12% return which would have increases the amount of your investment to rupees 1120 in the next year. The present value depends upon the three factors, the future value of the sum, the rate of return and the time period. There is a positive relationship between the future value and present value, a negative relationship between the rate of return and the present value and again a negative relationship between the time period and the present value. Next is present value of an annuity. Sometimes the financial manager might be faced with a situation where he has to invest a certain amount of money into an investment opportunity and he is expected to receive a certain equal amount at the end of each of the next say 4 or 5 years. This is the case of annuity. For example, if you were to receive rupees 1000 at the end of each of the next 3 years, assuming the rate of discount to be 10%, the present value 
of the total sum to be received over this period can be calculated as follows. The values of amounts to be received at different time periods need to be discounted at an appropriate rate of discount for the relevant length of time period. These values combined together will provide us with the present value of the total amount to be received over the next 3 years. This value comes out to be rupees 2487. Alternatively, we can take the help of the present value annuity factor to find out the present value of an annuity. The value of present value annuity factor PVFA can be found out and it can be multiplied with the annuity amount to find out the present value of the annuity. The corresponding value of PVFA in the table is 2.487. By multiplying this value with the value of annuity amount, we can find out the present value of the annuity. Present value of annuity is equal to annuity amount into PVFA R, n. Present value of annuity is equal to 1000 into 2.487. It comes out to reach 2487. Thus, the value obtained through the above formula is the same as that obtained through the previous calculations. Next is present value of unequal cash flows. In the above case, we are faced with the situation in which investments in a project resulted in the cash inflows of equal amount in the next three years. But in real life, it may so happen that the cash inflows that occur to us over a number of years may not be of equal amount. Say for example, we are to receive rupees 1000, rupees 1050 and rupees 1150 at the end of first, second and third year respectively. In this case, the present value will be calculated as present value is equal to future value 1 upon 1 plus r raised to the power 1 plus future value 2 upon 1 plus r raised to the power 2 plus future value 3 upon 1 plus r raised to the power 3. Thus, present value will be equal to 1000 upon 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power 1 plus 1050 upon 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power 2 plus 1150 upon 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power 3. After doing the calculations, we get the answer as present value is equal to rupees 2640.86. Alternatively, the present value in this case can be found by multiplying the present value factor PVF with the respective cash inflows. The value of PVF can be found from the PVF table. Present value is equal to future value 1 into PVF 10% comma 1 plus future value 2 into PVF 10% comma 2 plus future value 3 into PVF 10% comma 3. Present value is equal to 1000 into 0 0.901 plus 1050 into 0 0.826 plus 1150 into 0 0.751. After multiplying and adding them, we get the answer as rupees 2639.95 pesa. Now, let us recapitulate what we have learned from this module. TVM is a crucial concept in financial management. It can be used to compare investment alternatives and to resolve problems involving loans, mortgages, leases, savings and annuities. TVM is based on the concept that a dollar that you have today is worth more than the promise or expectation that you will receive a dollar in the future. Money that you hold today has more value because you can invest it and earn interest. After all, you should receive some compensation for foregoing spending. For example, you can invest your dollar for one year at a 6% annual interest rate and accumulate $1.06 at the end of the year. You can say that the future value is $1.06 given a 6% interest rate and a one year period. It follows that the present value of the $1.06 you expect to receive in one year is only $1. A key concept of TVM is that a single sum of money or a series of equal 
evenly spaced payments or receipts promised in the future can be altered to an equivalent value today. Conversely, you can define the value to which a single sum or a series of future payments will grow to at some future date. You can compute the fifth value if you are given any four of interest rate, number of periods, payments, present value and future value. The net present value calculation and its variations are quick and easy ways to measure the effects of time and interest on a given sum of money whether it is received now or in the future. The calculation is perfect for short and long term planning, budgeting or reference. This demonstrates that time literally is money. The value of the money you have now is not the same as it will be in the future and vice versa. So it is important to know how to calculate the time value of money so that you can distinguish between the worth of investments that offer you returns at different times.